Sealmaster presents On the Pavement, featuring the Spraymaster TR575. Hello, Garrett Knoll here from Sealmaster Equipment. Here to talk to you today about the Spraymaster TR575 with Pro Air System. This particular unit is designed to mix and apply pavement sealers with sand loadings. Let's go ahead and get into some of the features of this machine. Here we are standing at the front of the Spraymaster TR575. As you can see, this particular unit does feature our extended storage deck option with the loading ramp on the opposite side. And directly behind me is our 13 horsepower Honda engine. It does come standard with an electric start feature. And the Honda engine is, is powering our 30 CFM compressor unit, which does deliver plenty of pressure to our air dual diaphragm pump. Located right here behind our 30 CFM air compressor is the hydraulic control valve for our full sweep agitation function. Clearly labeled here, I've got agitator forward and reverse. Okay, and this machine does feature our round tank design with true full sweep agitation and rubber wiper blades. So I just walked onto our optional extended storage deck that th this particular machine features. This is one of our most popular features on the Spraymaster TR575 units. As you can see, there is plenty of room at the front of this machine to safely and securely store all of your additional equipment, such as your line stripers, your blowers, your squeegees, any additional equipment you may have this is a great option for storing those, those additional tools and getting them to the job site safely and securely. We also wanted to mention to you that this unit does have an available brush water box option, which would be mounted here at the front of the machine. That option can be used to ensure that we're not drying out our brushes overnight, okay? That's what the brush water option can be used, brush water box. One additional option that this machine does not have is the 50 gallon water system which can be used to completely flush this machine after you complete a job. Like I said, this particular unit doesn't have it, but if this machine had the 50 gallon water system, your water tank would sit here in this bracket. Up here mounted on the front of the tank is your 10 gallon hydraulic oil tank, your 12 volt battery and also your hydraulic motor that drives your full sweep agitation. The hydraulic motor is coupled to the shaft with a rigid coupling and there's also a four bolt flange bearing back here that is a good idea to take a look at each day on your preventative maintenance schedule making sure you've got plenty of grease in this bearing. One other thing we wanted to mention to you guys is located right here on the bottom right hand corner of your hydraulic oil tank, right next to your battery is your, your main hydraulic oil shutoff valve, okay? So as you can see, I've got a yellow handle here. This is right next to my hydraulic suction filter, hydraulic suction filter element, which leads me over to my hydraulic pump, which is directly mounted to the engine. The only hydraulic function we have on this machine is for your agitator. Guys, we wanted to get into just a little bit of detail on the 30 CFM compressor itself, okay? Just piece by piece, top to bottom. We're looking at our air filter housing. We've got our compressor pump assembly, this whole entire unit here. And I do have a little sight glass on the compressor, and I should be able to see an oil level in there that's right, that anywhere inside this red circle here. There's a little red circle on front of my sight gauge. Okay, I want to make sure that I've got oil level that's in that red circle. And I've also got a pressure gauge mounted on the outside of this tank. And once the system is completely charged, I should be reading somewhere around 125 PSI on this gauge. Last thing I wanted to mention was our master air shutoff valve 
is located right here on the back end of the of the compressor around the tank itself. Okay, this is my master shutoff valve for my air. The TR575 does feature a locked and secure lid with a vent port. To open, crack the handle and the lid swings open. And to lock, simply bring the latch back up and you're secure. Guys, on our 13 horsepower Honda engine, I wanted to just go through a quick breakdown of your engine controls here. So when you're starting this engine, we always wanna make sure that our fuel is turned to the on position. You have two switches here. We have a throttle, a choke, and a fuel on. We have engine RPMs. At this point in time, I am fully choked all the way to the left, and I'm going to turn my fuel to the on position, okay? On these Honda engines, it's very important that at the end of the day, we are turning the fuel switch to the off position to make sure we don't get any fuel permeating down into the oil pan. A Couple additional items on the Honda engine, guys. Number one, we've got a safety feature for a, a pull start here, just in case our electric uh, ignition is uh, going bad or we have a dead battery. And the second thing for ease of maintenance, this Honda engine comes equipped with an engine oil drain tube. Here we are at the back of the TR575 Spraymaster trailer. We just want to give you a quick run through of all your main valves back here, okay? Starting left to right, we are looking at our main air on and off to the pump. We're flowing through a water separator and an air regulator, okay? Down here closest to the tank at the back of the machine is our master material on and off. Out here beyond our one gallon basket strainer, this valve actually serves two purposes. Number one, if you have your master material valve open and your rear discharge valve open, you are just gravity bulk discharging material. This valve can also be used as a refill suction valve to refill from a stationary tank. Okay, we're gonna get into that a little bit more later. Moving up here, right below our surge tank, is our hand wand valve on and off. We also have spray bar on and off. And over here beyond the surge tank, we have recirculation on and off. Plus we have manual open and close valves for all five of our spray tips. Now that we've been through some of the benefits and some of the features of this unit, we're going to go ahead and fire the engine up and show you how to properly set your air diaphragm pump pressure to 80 PSI. Guys, here we are at the back of the Spraymaster TR575. And because this machine has so many options bolted on it, we wanted to run through what comes standard on this machine versus what you're currently looking at here in the video. Okay, I am currently sitting on an optional operator seat at the rear of the machine. This does not come standard. This is something that needs to be optioned into the order. Okay, we have a 75 foot hose reel. Without this hose reel, otherwise we would have, the hose would just be wrapped around the arms on the other side of the machine. This is a manual style 75 foot hose reel. We also have an upgraded electric reel where you can wind your hose back up with the press of a button, okay? We also have the optional spray bar on this machine, five tip spray bar. And this unit has also been upgraded to the two inch air, dual air diaphragm pump. Standard option is a one and a half inch. This machine has been upgraded to a two. Guys, we real quickly wanted to touch on the two inch dual air diaphragm pump that is optioned onto this machine versus what comes standard, which is the one and a half dual diaphragm pump. The reason you would wanna upgrade to a two inch is if you're gonna be spraying our material with heavy sand loading, this two inch dual air diaphragm pump will move more material per cycle than the one and a half inch, which gives the internal components a longer wear life. Located here at the rear of the machine is our one gallon strainer basket with the easy open lid. 
Some of the other machines in the industry you'll see will have a bunch of little wing nuts that you have to take off. Ours is a nice, easy open lid. All you do is unscrew, give it a twist, and out it comes. And we're gonna be checking this basket for any large particles. All we're doing is trying to strain out the large, bigger, bigger chunks that may cause tip clogging, just to give us a nice flow of material through the system. Here we are guys at the right side of the machine. Just gonna give you a quick demonstration of the 75 foot hose and spray wand. This is three quarter inch hose in diameter. And also we wanted to just show you, when you're all done for the day and you're getting ready to take this machine down the road, make sure when you're hanging this thing up that you drop this particular portion of the wand right here where the threads right above the fitting you want to make sure you're dropping that into your u-joint and dropping your door down this is your locking door and now this wand truly cannot go anywhere as you're traveling down the road the TR575 has two 6,000 pound axles which are weight rated for much higher than the capacity of the machine this gives the machine a little added safety from a weight standpoint and these are radial tires. This particular unit has a pretty cool option. This is our easy folding, easy loading ramp option. As you can see, all we need to do is pull one pin. This ramp folds down. And obviously this is for easy loading of your additional tooling such as your line stripers, your blowers, easy access walking up onto our extended deck. This machine features two leaf spring style axles rated at 6,000 pounds a piece. There is also electric braking for when you step on the brakes in your truck, the brakes are applying here at the wheels. And we also have a safety breakaway brake system that we're gonna show you next. This machine features a breakaway system in the event that this trailer ever separates from the tow vehicle. Couple three different things about this breakaway system. Number one, it is battery operated, and in order to tell if it does have a full charge, all you need to do is press your green test button, and you will get a green indicator light that says fully charged here. So I'm just gonna press it, my green light comes on, I know I've got a full charge. Standard seven prong electrical connection. Anytime this is plugged into the back of a vehicle, you are charging the battery that's in your safety breakaway switch. And this cable, which leads to your breakaway switch, will need to be connected to your tow vehicle. And in the event this is separated, this cable will tug on that switch and essentially activate the breakaway system and engage your trailer brakes, which is supposed to prevent this trailer from changing lanes and will bring it to a stop. So we're getting ready to turn this machine on and walk you through the operation, but we first wanted to mention, as we're hooking this thing up to the truck, we wanted to mention to you that all of our machines, all of our trailered machines across the board come standard with a three inch pinnel hook, okay? We do have ball hitches available and the style receiver that we're using is a combination pinnel and ball receiver, okay? You can use just a straight pinnel hook or you can order this thing in with the, with the trailer hitch and ball, but we are using the combination style receiver and all of our machines come standard with three inch pinnel hook. Okay guys, let's go ahead and spray some sealer with our spray wand and our spray bar. First things first, as always, before we start this machine, proper safety glasses and safety gloves at all times. And let's go ahead and give this machine a safety walk around, checking all of our fluid levels, capacities, battery charges, making sure everything is safe. When we go and turn this machine on, we wanna make sure it's safe to operate. Okay guys, we've done our safety inspection. We've checked all of our fluids and filters. We've got no hydraulic leaks anywhere. This machine is safe to operate. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start our engine. We're gonna start building pressure in the compressor up to 125 PSI. And you're gonna see me engage the agitation function. Okay, I'm gonna turn my fuel on. This engine is already hot because we've been playing with it so I don't need the choke. the faster we're going to build air pressure. 
On our gates here, we're waiting for 125 PSI. And I'm gonna start my education function. Here we are at the rear of the machine. We're gonna go ahead and set our dual diaphragm pump pressure to 80 PSI. First things first, we're gonna open our main material valve. We've already checked our basket strainer, make sure this lid's nice and tight. We're gonna open up our main recirculation valve. Okay. And now we're just gonna crack the air, our main air to the pump, pass in through the regulator, hear the pump cycle on. And on this gauge here, when I turn the pump back off, it's gonna jump to a pressure setting. You're going to hear the pump cycle into neutral. At this point in time, we have a pressure setting of 60 PSI. We want to increase that pressure to 80 PSI. Using our regulator valve, I'm turning to the right. Until I've reached my 80 PSI mark on my regulator. At this point in time, we're safe to go ahead and turn on that recirculation. We've got internal pressure of 80 PSI. Here we are at the back of the TR575 and we wanted to walk you through setting the internal pump pressure to 80 PSI. You want to operate that pump at a minimum of 80 PSI internal pressure on your dual diaphragm pump. Okay. So the first thing we need to do is turn on our main material valve. Okay. I'm also going to reach across and turn on my recirculation valve. Open my recirculation valve. Okay. At this point, I'm just going to reach right behind me and just crack my air pressure, which is going to allow pressure through the system and into my pump. You can see on this gauge, my needle has started jumping. I'm going to reach back across and I'm going to close my recirculation and see where that needle jumps. The pump is cycled into neutral. And as you can see, I'm just a hair shy of 80 PSI internal pressure on the pump. So all I'm gonna do is reach down to my regulator valve. And I'm gonna increase that pressure just a hair. Now I can reach back over, open up my circulation pump. Now I know I have set my internal pressure on my dual diaphragm pump to 80 PSI. Okay. With that recirculation valve open, that means our system is completely charged. And at this point in time, we are ready to close the recirc valve and either open the spray bar or the spray wand. In regards to our dual air diaphragm pump, we just showed you how to dial this in to 80 PSI internal pressure. However, we wanted to make mention that the 80 PSI is not a maximum or a minimum as a matter of fact. Depending on the, on the viscosity of the material you're trying to move, either through your spray wand or through your spray bar, will determine how much internal pressure you're gonna need. It is not uncommon for us to have to dial this pump up to 125 PSI to effectively move material through the spray bar. 80 PSI is a good starting point for your spray wand for you not to be fighting it. The wand will want to hold itself in a perfectly horizontal position. You're not going to be fighting it with too much pressure trying to hold it down, nor are you going to have the weight of the wand. It should give you a nice even distribution and the wand should feel very nice and light in your hands. 
One of the most outstanding features of the TR575 Spraymaster trailer is the ability to use the dual air diaphragm pump to draw material out of a bulk tanker or bulk storage tank and refill your unit on the job site, okay? The way that this process happens is number one, you are going to attach your hose via quick coupling to your bulk discharge or your suction port here, okay? You wanna make sure that your main material valve is closed, okay? At that point in time when you have a solid connection here and I'm closed here, I'm gonna turn on my recirculation valve. I'm gonna open here. Once I have all those valves open, I'm safe to go ahead and crack open my main pump, okay? At that point in time, material will be drawn out of the bulk tanker, will pass through the strainer basket, up through the pump, and into the tank through your recirculation port. Okay guys, let's go ahead and walk you through the order of operations with the valves to go ahead and get this system charged and that way we can move material either through our spray wand or through our spray bar. We are gonna start with the actual spray wand, okay? So all we're gonna do is run through the order of operations on the valves and please keep in mind we are using water. This is a new machine so it's not gonna be apples to apples. Just bear with us, we are using water, okay? So first thing is always first, I'm gonna reach down and open my main material valve. At this point in time, I can reach over and open my recirculation valve. Now I can come over here and open my main pump. You're gonna hear the pump cycle on. All we need is for that pump to cycle two or three times to charge the system. Then it's safe to close my recirculation valve. The pump will cycle through and kick into neutral, okay? At that point in time, I'm gonna check and make sure I've got my 80 PSI on the gauge, depending on viscosity of the product. So I'm gonna dial this in to about 80 PSI, okay? At this point in time, I can come over and grab my spray wand. My system is charged. As I come around to the back of the machine, I'm gonna turn on my main spray wand valve. Okay, now my hose is charged. I'm gonna walk out and give myself some slack here. Okay. And remember, when I open my valve, I always wanna be moving. Make sure I feather it in. Okay. And as we talked in the video, this spray wand just wants to float in my hand. It just wants to float, see that? There's hardly any weight of the wand in my hand. It's just keeping itself right there. And if you have too much pressure, let me show you. If this has too much pressure, this thing is gonna wanna run away on you. All we need to do is come back to this air regulator and dial this thing back. Okay, I dialed that back to about 65 PSI. Pick up my wand, stay moving. And now this thing is just right. This thing is just right. Look at it just, just holding right there. Okay guys, we're ready to go ahead and move some material through our spray bar, okay? We're gonna show you the order of operations to go ahead and charge the system. Very similar to what we just did with the spray wand, okay? First things always first, we're gonna open our main material valve. Okay. We're gonna open our recirculation valve. Okay. At this point in time, it's okay to go ahead and feather in our pump pressure. You can hear the pump cycle on. One other thing I wanna mention at this point in time is we do have the engine RPMs cranked all the way up. Whenever we're moving material through the spray bar, we wanna have those engine RPMs cranked up. The pump has now cycled through. It's okay to go ahead and close our recirculation valve. The pump will cycle through and kick itself into neutral. At this point, we're gonna double check our internal pump pressure at the regulator. Remember when I was using the spray wand, I dialed it back to about 65 PSI. Let's go ahead and crank that up to a minimum 80 PSI through the spray bar.
I gave her a little bit more. She's sitting about 84, 85 PSI. Now all I need to do is go around and hit all my spray nozzle valves. Okay, now I am this valve away from moving material through my spray bar. I'm gonna go ahead and give my driver the high sign, hop in the operator seat, we're gonna lay some material. Okay guys, I'm up here in the operator seat. I'm gonna go ahead and give my driver the high sign, and as he pulls away, I'm just gonna feather this valve open. I almost have my, air, my pump pressure all the way open. I'm still not all the way open. We don't need to have that valve all the way open. It'll drain the compressor. So I'm about three quarters of the way open, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and give my driver the sign. Started moving. I'm just gonna feather this in real nice. And remember, my surge tank is helping us keep a nice, even flow of material. Okay guys, real quickly, proper shutdown procedure for your spray bar and how to relieve this entire system of pressure, okay? I just got done laying a nice spray with my spray bar. Now it's okay to go ahead and close everything down. Let's run through those procedures real quick. Step one, we're gonna close all five of our nozzles. One, two, three, four, five. At this point in time, it's okay to reach back and turn off my pump pressure completely. Okay, after I've relieved my pump, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off my main material valve. Okay, now I'm gonna come over to my recirculation valve and I'm gonna open it briefly just to relieve the system of the pressure. You'll hear the pump cycle. Okay, my system's no longer pressurized. I'm gonna go ahead and shut it. And that's all I've got for your shutdown procedure. You just always want to make sure you're closing your nozzles just so you're not dripping down the, down the road when you leave the job site. As we're going through the features on this machine, we also wanted to mention to you the domed surge tank that we have on all of our units. The reason we use the domed surge tank is it is actually better than a flat top surge tank at pulsation dampening. And all this, this part is doing is creating a nice even flow, nice even pressure throughout the system so you're not getting those big gushes of material either through your spray wand or your spray bar. Guys, as always, we wanted to recommend some wares and spares to have on the shelf for your TR575 Spraymaster trailers. You know, depending on how many of these you have out in the field and operating, we would recommend to you to have the air filter for your compressor and your air filter for your engine. There is also a suction filter on your hydraulic system. That's your hydraulic filter element on your suction side. Okay, we would also recommend you have plenty of 8070 spray tips or spray nozzles in stock, plus your one gallon strainer basket insert. Okay, and lastly, depending on whether or not you have the one and a half inch or two inch dual diaphragm pump, we would recommend that you have the rebuild kits in stock that include the diaphragms, the check balls, and the seals. With all that being said, we wanted to thank you for watching. Hope this video has added value. Thanks for watching. Let's review the key features. 575 gallon capacity. Hydraulically controlled full sweep agitator with forward and reverse provides complete material mixing. Rubber wiper blades on agitator paddles keep sides of tank clean and prevent material buildup. Low maintenance one and a half inch air driven dual diaphragm pump designed for spraying sealer with sand loadings, designed for extended use with minimal maintenance. 13 horsepower Honda engine powers the air compressor and hydraulic system. 30 CFM air compressor. 75 foot hose and spray wand. One gallon easy clean basket strainer. Two 6,000 pound heavy duty axles provide more capacity than needed. Safety breakaway trailer braking system automatically applies trailer brakes if trailer breaks loose from tow vehicle. Available options include extended storage deck with fold down ramp for hauling blowers, stripers, tools, and more. 
larger 2-inch air diaphragm pump for greater volume and durability, 50-gallon water tank system with pump, manually operated spray bar with operator seat, hydraulically driven sand pumper 2 material pump system provides greater pressure as well as greater volumes for heavy sand loading, Hydraulically operated spray bar for units that feature the Sand Pumper 2 material pump system. Squeegee drag box assembly. Hand operated hose reel. Electric hose reel returns spray hose with the press of a button. Brush water box for storing sealer applicator brushes. Nighttime working lights. Water cooler. The TR Spraymaster units are also available in 750 and 1,000 gallon capacities. For more information on this machine and all other Sealmaster equipment, contact your Sealmaster representative at 800-395-7325 or visit sealmaster.net.